Hey, 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 this is Beverly Bozeman. I am the creator of About Her Ministry YouTube channel and the soon to be released best selling book, Diary of a First Lady Shiloh Grammar. Thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Be sure and share this with your friends and your family. Um, happy Wednesday, everybody. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, my live stream today is entitled, You Better Know Who is Holding Your Garter. And garter is, um, for those who may not know, it's the traditional piece of wedding attire for the bride. She wears it around her, you know, just above her knee. It's a piece of elastic and it has lace on it, bows or whatever. And it's something that's symbolic of a woman getting married and it's taken off like during the reception, the groom will take will lift up her dress she'll sit down or whatever he'll lift it up to her knee pull it off and then all of the guys who are single will stand behind him he'll toss it over his head whoever catches it is going to is supposedly the next one in line to get married it's kind of like the male version of the bouquet toss for the woman who tosses it over her head or whatever so that's what a garter is if you don't know and that's kind of what i'm talking about so I was listening to um, Prophetess Maddie Nottage on YouTube, right? And she was talking about how um, a lady came to her during a service and the lady was like in tears, just crying, 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 having a fit. She was pregnant and she had gotten married not too um, long ago or prior to them meeting her right and the lady was you know really distraught she was like I, I got married a couple of years ago and it's like every time I get pregnant I lose my baby and I'm pregnant now and I cannot bury another baby you have got to help me and so the minister was she's like this deliverance minister she will help deliver people from demonic situations right and so the pastor began the the preacher began to pray with her and she said that God had put it in her spirit to ask her about the wedding day who had her garter belt and so the lady said well my husband's friend he caught the garter belt and so um you know he had it he was the one who caught it she was like the preacher was like no who actually has it now she said because I see God just showed me that the garter belt did not leave with him that day. It left in a purse. And she said, um, as it turned, he had asked her husband what happened. Did he know what happened? The friend who got the garter was approached by the man's mother the woman's mother-in-law and he she asked could she have it and he was like you know since this is my homeboy's mom yeah you can have it she had it come to find out the mother was casting spells using the garter belt so when it comes to like witchcraft and stuff like that, you just need an item that was worn or possessed by the particular person and you can cast all kinds of spells. So what happened was the mother was of retirement age and she had her son purposefully later in life so that when he become became of working age, he would be able to help fund her retirement. When he got married, she did not assume that he would put his wife first and then moms would have to come next later down the line or whatever. But that's what happened. The son put his wife first and then they started to try and have kids. So the mom was going to have to get in where she could fit in and the mom was like, uh-uh. I had him late in life so he could help take care of me. I'm not going to stand in line behind her and no kids. So she took the garter 
and put spells on it. And it was miscarriage spells so that she could never have kids. Ain't that grimy? The mother-in-law held, I'm going to, in case y'all lost me, because when I heard it, I was just like, Ugh. the mother-in-law was expecting her son to take care of her in her retirement age. But he got married and wanted to have a family. So the mother-in-law got the garter from the dude who caught it at the wedding and placed miscarriage spells on the garter. So the wife or the daughter-in-law could not have kids. She kept having miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage and they hadn't been married that long. And it made me think, not necessarily about um, somebody, you know, trying to do witchcraft on us or whatever. But who is in your circle, in your family, that you see on a regular basis or you see and don't really give them a whole lot of thought? Hey, Jeanette, and they have your garter. And what are they doing to your guard, your garter? So I was just blown away to find out that the mother-in-law was so grimy. And it made me think about people I know who are just struggling. It's not about people I know having complications with having children. They're just having problems in their marriage, problems in, with their health, with their finances, on the job, with their kids. And every type of issue that they're having it made me think, is somebody doing something to them? And it doesn't necessarily have to be like somebody's casting a spell, you know, to make these bad things happen. That's highly possible. I can tell y'all about some of the dreams that I have. God is warning me about, folks. Some of it's, well, anyway. But if you if you believe that there is somebody in your life who is, casting a spell on you um, or something to that effect, then you need to go and, and seek some help about that. But what I mean, like in the everyday regular sense, who has access to you, to your life, to your kids, to your finances, to your spouse, to your help, to your home, to your job, to your car on a regular basis, who could very well be sabotaging you? Could be setting things up so it's harder for you to get things accomplished. Who's picking up your kids or who's hanging out with your kids and the next thing you know, your kids are being rebellious or your kids are only rebellious after they come back from hanging out with these people or this particular person. Who has your garter? If there is somebody who you deal with on a regular basis. And once you're done dealing with them, you have to go somewhere and sit down and lay down because they have just taken so much out of you. That might be the person that has your garter. Now, granted, there are some people, they don't know how to manage their lives. They don't believe in scheduling. They believe it, They believe in doing things at the last minute by the fly or whatever. And they always make you late. They always inconvenience you. So you can't do what it is that you need to do. Um, <clears throat> I don't mean it like those particular people because that's on you to tell them no. That's on you to tell them you have to schedule your time better so you don't inconvenience me and what I have to do. There are some people who are intentional with making sure you don't prosper in your finances. Like if you have a family member who has kids and they know that you have a weakness or a, or a soft spot for their kids and you got the bread because your kids are grown or you're basically in a financial better situation than them. They will spend their money the way they want to. Then when it's time to take care of the things that need to be taken care of, 
they looking at you. If you don't help us, we're going to be sitting in the dark. Or little uh, little Peanut, he got to go to a basketball camp. Because I've been promising him and now I don't have the money. And she's sitting there with a $500 wig on. It's those type situations to where people are intentional in what they do to hinder your life. It might not necessarily be witchcraft, full-blown witchcraft, but manipulation is a part of witchcraft. Making people or tricking people into doing what it is that you want to do for your benefit. I ain't talking about um, trying to talk somebody into going to the movie you want to see. We're talking about major life decisions or lifestyles. You need to know who has your garter and what they're doing with it. Some people, you got to watch out. Some people, let me tell you this. Some people cannot stand you for whatever the reason, and the reason is irrelevant unless you have done some, something to them. Then, you know, they have a valid reason. But sometimes it could be the fact that you want better for your life, that you are trying you are minding your own business. You're working on your health, your wealth, or whatever. And some people are just going to dislike you for all of those positive reasons, right? And what they'll do is they will link up with other people. Mm. Mm. They will have your garter. And they will pass it around. They will take your garter and pass it around. It won't be in public. It'll be on the slide, like somebody trying to pass a note in class or eating candy at the back of the church, hoping you don't get caught. And it's probably some of the same ones that skin and grin in your face on a regular basis. You better know who got your garter. They will pass your garter around because they all have the same level or same reason of dislike for you. Valid or not. And here's what's the jacked up part about it is some of y'all got people in your lives who despise you, hate you, can't stand you, jealous of you, resentful of you, whatever. And they want to see you do so bad in life. They want to see you hurt. They want to see you beneath them. They want to see you in the same spot every year, crying and wallowing in misery that they will take your garter and cut it up so that everybody got a permanent piece. Pay attention to the people who celebrate you when it's convenient for them. Pay attention who, when people clap for you only when folks are looking. Mm -mm. Woo! Honey... Lord have mercy. That needs to be like a meme or something. That got me in my spirit. The only time they clap for you is when somebody is looking. But when ain't nobody looking, I can't stand that hoe. Cutting up your garter and passing it around so that everybody who can't stand you will get a piece. But check this out. I believe that if you are a child of the king and you tell him what's going on, not like he don't already know, but you go to him and you lay it down at his feet. He said, cast your cares upon me. And you lay it at his feet and you say, I'm going to give this to you and I'm going to take my hands off of it because I know how I do. I know it's me or you can get them better than I can. You know what they saying behind my back and you know who the they are. If you do that, I believe that God will move on your behalf in a way that you can't. You cannot even wrap your mind around. And it'll be in such a way that if they're talking about you and setting you up in private, 
he gonna punish them out in public. And it could be a case of the world will know. Or it could be a case of where he'll tell you and you'll know that this is the person that was talking about you. This is the person that was trying to set you up. You better know who has your garter. And here's the thing. If you are able to get your garter back, do it. And what I mean by that is there might be some people that you might have to distance yourself from. Or how did the saying go, feed them with a long handle spoon? We ain't got time to be playing around. This ain't no doom and gloom piece. This is just the truth. We got plenty of things to be doing, places to be going to, things to be building and celebrating and X, Y, Z. We ain't got time to be sitting around entertaining people who can't stand us. That's foolishness. That's just plain old foolishness. If you know good and well they cannot stand you, why are you entertaining them? Anyway, that's about it. Make sure you know who has your garter. If you can get it back, get it back. Pay attention, child. Pay attention. Anyways, that's about it. Um... My book is available for pre-order today. Um, Was well, going to be the last day, but it's still um, in the hands of the printer and whatnot, the samples and whatnot. So pre-order is going to be um, available a few more days. Go to BeverlyBozeman.com and get your pre-order today. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Be sure and share this with your friends and your family. And remember to release your genius. Pull off the impossible every day. Let's be glamorous, godly girls.